it's me i'm back um little updates i have been going through a lot of major life changes as is everyone my age um it was my birthday last week so i put my banner up there because this is the first time i've ever gotten this sort of um, sash and yeah um this is gonna be a wrap up of my october and november reads I'm currently in a reading slump, so I don't think I will be reading or finishing any more books by the end of November. So I'm just going to record what I have so far. Um, so yeah, let's just get right into it. The first one was A Sorceress Comes to Call by T.K. Fisher. A Sorceress Comes to Call is about Cordelia and her mother, who is a sorceress, an evil sorceress, who tries to get men to fall in love with her and be her benefactor. And so in this story, her mother is trying to get a new man to fall in love with her, and they move into his house. Um, and they move into his house, which he lives with his sister. And over time, his sister as well as Cordelia try to break up this engagement and it is just basically a tale of friendship, a tale of um, motherhood, manipulation, coming of age, good themes I think mm. but I just think this book was really overhyped and it wasn't necessarily for me I don't exactly remember, I gave it a three stars, but I don't exactly remember what it was that I didn't like about it. I think it just wasn't for me, you know? Um, but overall, the magic system was really easy to understand, so there's nothing, no issues for that part. The next book I read was Martyr by Kaveh Akbar, and I wanted to read this because this was one of the nominated books for the Booker Long List. Martyr follows a story of a young man, Cyrus Shams, who is basically obsessed with the idea of martyrdom. And the reason why he's obsessed with this is because his mother died in a plane crash flying from, I think, Iran to Kuwait when he was born. And his father, I believe also dies from illness when he was in college and so he's depressed and also addicted to substances does not necessarily see any significant value of moving on in life but also doesn't want to die forgotten and so therefore he becomes obsessed with the idea of being a martyr and again great concept but I had to DNF at 50% because I just felt like the writing, it wasn't for me because it went everywhere. Um, it had different perspectives, so I really liked the perspective of his mother, his perspective not so much. Then there was also the perspective of his uncle who is back in Iran or Kuwait, I believe, and Cyrus himself is based in the US. And the reason why I didn't like this is because it kind of felt plotless and aimless, even though the plot was really good, like I said before. So yeah, I had to DNF and I guess it kind of made sense to me why um, this book didn't make it to the, as a finalist. I gave Martyr two stars. Next, I read Galatea by Madeline Miller. Um, I really liked Madeline Miller. I really liked Circe. I really liked A Song of Achilles, which I read earlier this year. Um, but I'm not sure what else she's published. So in the meantime, I read Galatea, which is a really, really, really short book. I think 60 pages, um, which Galatea tells the tale of a creature. Um, I believe she was made of marble. So she was carved by her creator and she comes to life from marble. And because of this, her creator feels a sense of ownership over her. But of course, 
once she starts to have her own consciousness and desires in life that don't revolve him, then she is no longer of use to him and he basically says, I don't want to play with you anymore. And she gets institutionalized. And it is kind of a story, it's a very, very short story of her trying to get back into his good graces, but she is too late because he has already created yet another marble sculpture that is coming to life. That is basically his new toy to play with. Yeah, I gave this one a four stars. I really like this. Um, but yeah, I really want to read more books by her. The next thing I read was Evil Eye by Itaf Ram, and I gave Evil Eye a three stars. Let me just recap on this book so I remember what it's about. Yara was raised in a Palestinian home in Brooklyn, in a very conservative Palestinian home in Brooklyn, and she thought that she would finally be free when she decided to marry her husband, an entrepreneur who took her basically out of Brooklyn into like another city. Um, and from there, it kind of tells the tale of her marriage and motherhood and how she struggles to balance her career, but also how to balance that with being a housewife in a traditional um, immigrant Arab household. Of course, you can probably assume that her aspirations and career are not really taken seriously. Um, her, her ability and her love as a mother is often questioned throughout the book, so really good themes. Hi, editing me here to let you know that the reason why I didn't like this book is because even though it touches on depression and generational trauma, it becomes very repetitive and drags on. And then the main character kind of feels helpless at times and doesn't really act on her dissatisfaction with her life and her marriage. She just talks about it more than she does anything about it. In the end of October, I started reading this which might be might be my favorite book of this year so this was on my 24 books to read in 2024 video it's called as long as the lemon trees grow by zulfa katu tells the tale of salama who when this story is set, lives with her sister-in-law, Layla. Her parents have passed. Her dad and brother, their location is unknown because this was set in the Syrian revolution or before the Syrian revolution. It was set in a time where there was a lot of political turmoil in Syria. A lot of men were being taken away, imprisoned, killed, tortured. So she has no idea the whereabouts of her brother and father. She is a pharmacy student. She's a 16 or 17 year old pharmacy student who was then forced to become a doctor. Anyone who studied anything remotely medical was forced to become a doctor because obviously at a time of war, medical professionals are extremely needed. And so that's what she does. And throughout the story, we find out that she has a sort of um, imaginary friend, you can say, but I know that it is some sort of traumatic response and her brain kind of releases that in the form of this imaginary friend who comes every time she is stressed. His name is Kof. I don't know how to pronounce it. Yeah, I'll just put the name. And Kof basically 
gives her the worst case scenarios whenever anything is going to happen and she struggles to deal with him obviously it makes her seem crazy if she tells anyone that she sees this guy and this guy is telling her all of these things in her ear all the time cough can also be kind of viewed as her alter ego that not only spews negative thoughts in her head but if she does not listen to him he will replay those traumatic instances that have happened in her life like watching her mother die or being in an accident smashing her head open that's when hallucinations actually started was when she had her traumatic brain injury um and then in the story there's also a little bit of romance because she meets this guy what is his name <laughs> kinan so she meets Kinan at the hospital, there is a little love story going on, and Kauf, her alter ego imaginary friend, his main objective is to get her to leave Syria and to go to Europe. Um, at that time, people from Syria were traveling to Europe in these little like rafts, you know, through the Mediterranean Sea, and that was his only goal and objective is for her and her sister-in-law Layla to get to Europe, to get to Germany because that was her last promise to her brother is to make sure that Layla and their future baby were safe because Layla is pregnant and yeah it is a tale of found family, a tale of loss, a tale of grief, a tale of resilience and I mean, if you've watched my previous videos, this is exactly the kind of book that I love. So if you have recommendations like this, send it to me, send it to me. I will eat it up, okay? So yeah, this is probably, probably my favorite book of 2025. And I think everyone should read it. Then, I didn't finish this, but I attempted to. You see, I made an attempt, but I had to stop because this is a story of Nora. I'm not sure if she dies or if she kills herself, but basically the Midnight Library is kind of the place between death and the afterlife and in the midnight library you kind of get to see all the alternate versions of your life which in theory sounds like a great idea but i think reading it um nora's depression and her outlook on life kind of then made me sad and question my outlook on life but not in a good way it didn't make me reflect in a good way it kind of just made me sad and it turns out so many other people felt that way when they read this too so i kind of just stopped and i'm just gonna wait until ovulation phase starts kicking in and i feel a bit better and then maybe i'll give it a go because when i was reading this i was in my luteal phase so that was no bueno so if you want to read that book do not read it in your luteal phase moving on um I read A Monster Comes to Call because after reading The Midnight Li Library, I was in a reading slump and I didn't know what to read. So I was like, let me just read a short story. So I read A Monster Comes to Call. Hi, editing me again. Here to tell you that I said the name of this book wrong. It's actually called A Monster Calls by Patrick Ness. Tells the tale of a young boy whose mother is facing cancer kind of a um what do they call it what's the word not remission the opposite of remission her cancer comes back and he has these um kind of like night terrors as well as these uh night hallucinations which are different from the night terrors and in these night hallucinations, he sees this tree in his backyard come to life as a monster and kind of haunt him throughout the nighttime. And he's also unsure whether it's a dream or real life because he'll wake up and there would be 
leaves on his bedroom floor. There was one time he woke up and there was a sprout of like a branch on his bedroom floor. Um, he doesn't have any friends in school. He's being bullied for his mother being sick. His best friend doesn't talk to him anymore. He's struggling in class. It's a really, really, really difficult thing to read about because he's just a kid in middle school. Um, so you really feel for him. And the tree basically tells him, I'm going to tell you three stories. And in the end, you're going to tell me the last story, the fourth story. And in that fourth story, I want you to tell me what your nightmare is that you've been having every night. And we as the reader don't know what this nightmare is. Because keep in mind, the nightmare is not that he sees the tree. It's like he has another nightmare that we don't know about yet. So in these three tales that the tree tells him, there's always a life lesson to be learned. And I think everyone could value from, um, could benefit from reading about these life lessons because the lesson is not what you think it is. You know, it's like you'll be reading it and you'll think, oh, the lesson is A and it's actually D. So it was really good. I think it's really great for all ages. And of course, we eventually come to realize that this monster is kind of his brain's way of preparing him for the loss of his mother. So it's basically a trauma response. Um, I'm getting like goosebumps even talking about it. It was such a beautiful book. I think it was only 120 pages. Easily something you guys can give a read in a day. Um, I think if you take away two books from this video, it should be A Monster Comes to Call and As Long as the Lemon Trees Grow. Those two books teach a lot about resilience um, as well as really good lessons for you to take in your life. And then, again, still in a like semi-reading slump, I read another short story called The Yellow Wallpaper and I got this recommendation from Katerina Rehm. Um, I've been really liking her recommendations lately. The Yellow Wallpaper is again a really short book, like I think 30 or 40 pages. Um, and it just kind of sheds this tale of a woman who is married and they're, they're moving into this kind of like summer home it's a temporary home um, and the bedroom that she stays in has this really obnoxious and ugly yellow wallpaper and she can't stop thinking about it and of course she is currently facing some other issues like depression and other mental health problems to which she tells her husband and her husband of course does not take her seriously um, there's also a woman in the story. I believe she's supposed to kind of be like their house help or um, house manager type of situation. And the house manager, a woman, also doesn't take her seriously. Eventually, this yellow wallpaper drives her nuts, okay? Um, she doesn't want to be here. She wants to move to another room and nobody lets her move into another room. And because it drives her crazy, she eventually rips off as much of the wallpaper as she can. Now, you might think, what the fuck is the point of the story? And I'm here to tell you that this is basically a story of misogyny. This is a story of what happens when we do not listen to women. We do not take women's concerns seriously. And... That's what happens when you don't listen to people you're just gonna see them in their worst state when this whole time she's been telling her husband there's something wrong with me i need help there's something wrong with me i need help and he completely refuses to listen to her so yeah really impactful short story another great one um, I'm really happy that I'm giving short stories another chance because if you watched some of my previous videos, I did say that I thought short stories were not for me, but I'm glad that I've been proven wrong because these short stories are drying up my 
reading count for the year. And then lastly, I read A Very Large Expanse of Sea by Tahere Mafi. I do like her writing. There's nothing wrong with the writing. But I did think this book was childish and I did think that I was too old to be reading this book. I think it's a very like YA romance type of book. This is what I did like. I liked that the protagonist was from a Muslim Iranian immigrant family living in America who then falls for this white American classmate of hers. A romance bruise between them and this girl by the way Shireen she wears a headscarf she's not religious she just wears a headscarf and the guy Ocean is very interested in pursuing her I didn't have any issue with them getting together but I did think that it was just very very childish and just kind of took away from the story that I did want to be reading about because it ended up being a lot of dialogue of them texting and calling and da 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 which I did not care about. What I did want to read about was more about the dynamic of her as an Iranian living in America struggling with the racism that she faces but instead she just keeps her head down, she doesn't defend herself, she just lets it be and I get it. She's a teenager that hates life. I get it. I get that she doesn't want to push back against this xenophobia that she faces every single day of her life but because of that she kind of just has a loser mentality about it she doesn't have any aspirations to go to college no career aspirations no friends all she ever has is ocean and she does this break dancing competition with her brothers which i also thought was a weird element added into it because it did nothing for character growth um and then the book never touched on her dynamic with her parents even though her parents would never have allowed her to date a guy let alone a white guy um so i just think the book was really shallow the book was not nuanced the book was not giving what it was supposed to give and it had a lot of potential so those are the eight books that i I think eight or nine that I finished in the month of October and November. Like I said earlier, I am in a reading slump. I have literally been reading books. Um, can't even finish the first chapter and I move on to another book. Like nothing is catching my interest. Um, so I really doubt in the next week that I'm going to be reading or completing any other books. But yeah, that's all from me. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.